Welcome everybody to Bedbo TV. I'm your host, Jeff White. And in today's episode, I want to talk to you guys about what you should do when you travel. You can see here that in today's episode, I'm in a hotel room. And it's a very popular question right now with people traveling, you know, going to see loved ones and relatives or doing business travel. And, you know, what do you do to avoid taking bed books home with you? It's a huge concern. And so what I want to do is provide you with some pointers and some things that you should be aware of when you travel. And so as you can see, when I walked into the hotel room, the first thing you want to make sure you do is take your bag and put it down in an area away from your sleeping areas. You can see it's out here in the middle of the floor. That's a good place to leave it while you get yourself situated in the hotel room. Some people talk about putting it on the luggage rack and why that may not be a bad recommendation, I don't typically follow it because everybody puts their bag on the luggage rack, which means it could be an area that has bed bugs. The one thing you definitely don't want to do is walk into the room and do something like that because now the bag is on the bed and that may have bed bugs in it and you don't even know that yet. So we definitely don't want to do that. We want to go ahead and put it out in the middle of the floor. Obviously make sure you don't trip over it or anything like that. And then real quick what I want to talk about is some things that you should take with you and put in your bag before you travel. What I have over here is a good flashlight. Definitely something that you should travel with if you can. Now obviously with travel restrictions these days, you know, I'm not sure what you're gonna be able to put in your bag, but if you can take a little flashlight, maybe a keychain flashlight, something that'll help you see when you do a quick inspection of the hotel room. And then what I have here, this is actually a green clean dissolvable laundry bag. And you can pack either one of these or even a simple garbage bag, but you should bring bags with you. And we're gonna get back to that in a second when I talk about what you're gonna do when you leave the hotel room. But you should have a couple bags in your suitcase to help you bag things up before you leave. And as I said, we'll get back to that. Okay, so when you get to the hotel room, as I said, put your bag down in an area away from the sleeping areas. And what you're gonna do is take your trusty flashlight and you're gonna do a quick inspection of the hotel room. Now, my goal when I inspect a hotel room is to try to find any real large infestations. I don't wanna stay in a hotel room that has a huge problem and I get chewed up as I sleep in that bed at night. Nobody wants that. Not to mention that when you stay in a hotel room that has a, a bigger problem, most experts will say you probably run a higher risk of taking something home with you. So you want to do a quick inspection to identify those problem areas. And what you're going to do is you're going to look on the bottom of the box spring first. Now obviously without moving the bed it's going to be very difficult to see this area. But what you want to do is maybe get down on one knee or both knees and go ahead and look at the underside of the box spring wherever you can see that area. And of course you're going to look for the bugs and their spotting. And hopefully if there's a bad problem here, there should be some sort of evidence in that area. And you want to go all the way around the bed and do so. And then the other hot spot you want to look at is the headboard over here. The headboard is definitely an area in a hotel room that could potentially have a problem if there are bugs here. Now, what you want to do is you want to just look at the areas around the headboard. There's some cracks and crevices up here. You could possibly look at the bottom of the headboard. And you're again looking for bugs and the spotting. And what that's going to help you do is, again, identify a bad infestation. Now, if you want to go further, of course, you're probably going to have to take the bed up, stand the bed up, take the headboard off of the wall. And I can't uh, recommend enough that if you're going to start doing that, you may want to get hotel management involved. You know, if you start taking things up and you do so without their permission and you end up breaking something, you're going to end up being responsible for it. Not to mention moving this large bed could also pose an injury risk to you in terms of lifting it. And so you can go to the hotel management and say, hey, listen, I'm concerned about bed bugs. I would like to inspect my hotel room very well. Could you help me do so? And then hopefully they'll send somebody down to help you lift that bed, to help you take that headboard off the wall. But again, we're only trying to detect large infestations because remember, no matter how good of an inspection you do, if there's only a couple bugs here, you may not be able to find them. And so no matter what good inspection or no matter how good of an inspection you do, you may not be able to find them. So that's why I don't typically go any further. I just look for the obvious things, just trying to avoid staying in a badly infested room. And if I want to go further, I'll involve hotel management. And so that's what you want to do now. In terms of what you're going to do while you're staying here, so now I did an inspection of this room and I now know that there's no real bad infestation. I'm going to take my bag and I'm probably going to try to live right out of this bag while I stay in this hotel room. Now obviously if you're on a 10 day vacation you may need to unload things into the dressers. If you do so, that's, you know, it's your choice, that's fine. For business travelers that are in a hotel room for a night or two, I'll probably live right out of my bag and I'll 
keep that bag in an area, again, away from sleeping areas. So it might be somewhere along the side of this dresser or over by sliding glass doors, whatever the case may be. Another suggestion people have made is to put it in the bathtub, which may not be a bad suggestion because that's an area that shouldn't have bugs inside of it. So those are things that you're going to do while you sleep there. And of course, you're going to watch for bites. And if you notice anything suspicious, you want to go down to hotel management and let them know what's going on. Now, we are staying here. We did the inspection. We're leaving the bag in an area that shouldn't have bugs on it. What are we going to do when it's time to leave the actual hotel? And so what we're going to do is in this lovely bag of mine, I have a jacket. Yes, that's all I packed on this trip was a jacket. And what we're going to do is, okay, so we're getting ready to leave. We've got our clothes in this bag. And now I'm going to show you why we brought those bags. And so what you're going to do is you're going to take the bag, whether it's a dissolvable laundry bag or a normal garbage bag, which would be fine if I could find the opening. There we go. You're going to take your clothes and you're going to separate them into launderable piles and put them in the bag. You're going to seal this bag up using the tie that's with it or whatever the case may be. And that's how you're going to actually pack your bag. And so that way, when you return home, you can take these bags and just drop them right in the washing machine or empty them right into the washing machine. That way, you don't have to worry about unpacking the bag when you get home and spreading bugs around. And so you're going to go ahead, do that, separate all your clothes, make your launderable piles, close your bag up. And I do quickly recommend doing a quick inspection of the actual bag itself, you're going to look along seams and edges. Where bugs typically hide on uh, suitcases are along these seams and edges. They will line up along here. This is another good spot. Zipper seams are really good spots. And you're going to do a quick inspection of that bag just to make sure nothing obvious is going on. And so you've got your things bagged up. You're ready to rock here. You're ready to go home. You're going to go ahead, leave your hotel room, and we'll talk real quick about what you're going to do when you get home. Some other things that you should be aware of while you stay in the hotel itself. I brought a couple things to talk about. This is a luggage spray called Rest Easy. Um, and what it does is you can actually take this and spray the outside of the suitcase, and it's got a repellent in it. We don't know anything about this product. We don't know how effective this product is in terms of keeping bugs away from your suitcase. But my opinion of it is can't really hurt. It's labeled for it. What can it hurt to apply a little repellent on there and hopefully keep bugs off of it? We have your dissolvable laundry bags, which I showed you before, something you can use to pack things up. And then we also have Bug Zip, which is a product that you can take your suitcase and put it in this bag while you stay in that hotel room. And so it'll protect your bag against the bugs. Definitely another thing you should be aware of that's out there that you can use to protect your suitcase. Now, when you return home, we're going to take those bags out that bag out again and we're going to drop it in the washing machine or we're going to empty this bag out and put the clothes in the washing machine and you're going to go ahead and launder those on a hot wash and or a hot dry cycle and that will kill any bugs or eggs on it. Your non-launderable should not have a problem, your toothbrush and stuff, if you kept that in the bathroom it shouldn't theoretically have a problem, just do a quick inspection and you should be okay. But this guy right here is the trick. What are you going to do with this? And there really are no super simple answers. You know, you can do a quick inspection if you didn't have any bugs in your room, you didn't notice any bites, you didn't see any bugs on the suitcase. I know people who will just throw that suitcase right in their closet. I don't recommend that, but I do know people who do that. If you're nervous or concerned and you want to do something with it, the Pactite portable heating unit is a great option. It's a heater you can plug into the wall and will heat your suitcase up and kill any bugs and their eggs on it something worth buying, especially if you travel quite frequently. They do retail for a little over $300, so you know it's a little bit of an investment, but it's definitely worth it because the suitcase is typically where the bugs are going to get introduced, and it's a tough thing to deal with. So if you're going to have the Pactite, you can put it in a Pactite unit, and you can watch the Bedbug TV video on the Pactite, and that will tell you how to use the Pactite properly. And then the other thing we can talk about are these DDVP strips. Now, there are a couple different versions of this out there. Hot Shot, the one you see here in front of me, this is a strip that's treated with pesticide. You can put it in a garbage bag with your suitcase and it will help treat it. The bottom line though with this is, is that that method of use is not on this label, nor is bed bugs. And so theoretically doing that is an off-label usage of this pesticide. And if you call the manufacturer, they will tell you this pesticide is not meant to be used for bed bugs. And so 
just understand that if you are going to do that and you read about it online, people doing that, that it's an off-label usage and you will not find too many recommendations on how to do that properly. But it is something I do know people are doing. There's another pesticide strip out there called Nuvan Pro Strips that is labeled for bed bugs, but is not for sale in New York and California. And so you need to be aware of that. Um, but Nuvan Pro Strips is labeled for that usage and you can use it to treat your suitcase. You take your strip, your bag, you put them both in a garbage bag, you seal it up, and you want to make sure you follow all label directions on the pesticide that you buy. That's the most important point. Make sure you follow that label very closely. And so basically you're going to go ahead and put that in the bag, you're going to launder your items, and that's all she wrote really. Um, you know, this is going to take up to two weeks, you're going to need to leave the bag and the strip of pesticide in a garbage bag for two weeks or more. And so if you travel frequently, this may not be a good option for you, but it's something you can do if, if you have to treat something. And then the pack tight is a four hour cycle, as we talked about before. You're going to put this in the pack tight portable heater and run it for four hours. And so that's traveling and trying to avoid bed bugs. Really important topic that you need to be aware of. It was a really quick overview. I rushed through that information because I wanted to make sure I got it into a nice compact format. And that's it. If you have any questions about traveling and avoiding bed bugs, you can email me, jeff.white at bedbugcentral.com. And I hope you find this useful, and I hope everybody in their travels avoids taking bed bugs home with them. All right, everybody. I hope to see everybody soon enough.